Hello, this is Ms. Butcher. This video is about graphing cubic functions with transformations. So this is a cubic function. In a written out form, we would have ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So the parent function of a cubic is just y equals x cubed. And if we graph y equals x cubed, we have what we call an inflection point at 0, 0, because 0 equals 0 cubed. When we plot a 1, 1 cubed is 1. And when we plot a 2, 2 cubed is 8. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So all the way up here. And then negative 1 cubed is negative 1. And negative 2 cubed would be negative 8. So your graph does this looks almost like a part of a parabola here and part of a parabola there. Only it does this twisty turny thing right in the middle and we call that the inflection point. Now the cubic function, the parent function, is what we um, call an odd function and that's because it has symmetry about the origin. Rotational symmetry. If I were to spin that around 180 degrees it would look exactly the same. So if I did this it looks the same, 180 degrees rotated. And once again, that's called an odd function. So some key things that we might want to list about the parent function. Um, the inflection point, you're going to be asked to write that down. So the ordered pair there is 0, 0. I might ask you for the domain and range. So for any cubic function, the domain is all real numbers. It looks like it's pointing up and down, but it's actually pointing up and a bit to the right, and pointing down and a bit to the left. So our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. I can cube anything I want. And the range, which should be very clear, is negative, fin negative infinity to positive infinity as well. Another thing you're often going to be asked for is the x-intercept and y-intercept. Um, in the parent function, you can see very easily that both of these are 0, 0. Whenever it is a translated one, which we'll do pretty in a little bit, um, you'll be just plugging an x in for y and solving, plugging a 0 in for y and solving for x, plugging a 0 in for x and solving for y. And then the last thing that we will ask you about these is the uh, end behavior. And remember, you have to write end behavior. Um, you have to write it properly. We will say as x approaches and you can start with positive infinity, it doesn't matter, but on the right, we're going up. So y or f of x approaches positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, so as we're going to the left, we're going down. f of x approaches negative infinity. Okay, so now we're going to add all of our transformations to the basic cubic function. And we've done this before with several other types of functions, so this should be familiar. The a value right here is your vertical stretch or shrink. And remember, if, it is a, if it's greater than zero, it's the stretch, and if it's less than zero, it's your shrink. The b is your horizontal stretch or shrink. And remember, that's opposite. So if b is less than 0, it stretches. And if b is greater than 0, it, str it shrinks horizontally. h is your horizontal shift. And remember, we go opposite the sign. k is your vertical shift. And we do go with the sign. If a is negative, that reflects the entire function over the x-axis. And if b is negative, that reflects the graph over the y-axis. So we have all of that. And then if you remember, we, uh, the, one of the important things is our inflection point. On the parent function, it's at 0, 0. So the shifts are going to be the things that aff affect our inflection point. Your inflection point will always end up at hk. So your inflection point of your cubic is just like your vertex of your quadratic um, being at hk and being kind of the center of it all.
So now for some example problems. First one, we're going to graph f of x equals negative one-third times x minus two all cubed plus four. So the first thing we want to find is our inflection point. That's always at hk, so that's going to be at two, four. So there, we put it on the graph. All right, now to plot other points, we're going to look at this. We're going to say, well, I know it's negative. So instead of going down and up, it's going to go this way. So I'm just going to start picking numbers. I'm going to pl plug in a 1. If I plug in a 1, 1 minus 2 is uh, negative 1. All cubed is negative 1. Times negative 1 third is positive 1 third plus 4 gives us 4 and a third. So at 1, we're only up to 4 and a third right there. And we know this is going to have rotational symmetry. So if we're um, going left one and up a third, we're going to go right one and down a third. You can plug in a three if you want to prove it to yourself. Um, but we would get three and two thirds. The next one, um, if we plug in a zero, we're looking for a y-intercept now. So if we plug in a zero, we have zero minus two is negative two. Negative two cubed is negative eight times negative one-third gives us eight-thirds plus four. Four is twelve-thirds, and twelve and eight makes fourteen-thirds. No, twenty-thirds. Twenty-thirds, which is um, six and two-thirds. So four, five, six, and two-thirds would be about right there. So we know um, when we go over two to the left, we're going up two and two-thirds, so we can just, by symmetry, go, okay, well then, if we go over two to the right, we're going to be going down two and two-thirds. We should be at one and a third. And if you were to plug in a four, you would get one and a third. So when we connect these dots, because five dots is enough to show me the curve, there's our cubic function. Um, we can write our domain and our range, which are both going to be all real numbers. Terrible infinity there, sorry. And our range, negative infinity to infinity. If I wanted the x-intercept, where does it cross the x-axis? I would have to plug a zero in for y. So to find the x-intercept, we'd have to say zero equals negative one-third x minus 2 all cubed plus 4. So see, this is where that skill it comes in of solving. Um, we're going to need to subtract 4. I'll put it over here. Multiply it by negative 3. We get 12. 12 equals x minus 2 all cubed. So we're going to take the uh, cube root of 12. It's not plus or minus. And then we're going to subtract 2. I mean add 2. So the x-intercept is the cubed root of 12 plus 2. Like that, comma, 0, sorry, comma, 0. Cube root of 12 being approximately 4.3, so about where I had it crossing anyway. Our y-intercept, we already found that. That was at 0, um, six and two-thirds. And our end behavior, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. That's about all we can fit on this page. Okay, should have typed this. My handwriting is awful, but sorry. Next example, we're going to write the new equation of f of x equals x cubed. If the graph is stretched vertically by a factor of 8, reflected over the x-axis, shifted right 3 and down 7. So we have f of x equals, and then our a needs to be positive or negative if we're reflecting over the x-axis. That makes it negative. And our a, if we stretch vertically by a factor of 8, it's negative 8. 
then we have, um, we don't have a B because we don't have a horizontal stretch. Um, and we don't have a horizontal refle reflection, so X, we're going right 3, minus 3, cubed, don't forget the cube, and then down 7, minus 7. And that's it, just like all the other functions we've done so far. Okay, one more example. This time I want you to write the cubic function that has an inflection point of 11, 13, and passes through 12, 15. And we're going to talk about how to do this more algebraically tomorrow in tomorrow's video. Um, but in this, this video, I just want to talk about how to do it if you um, picture the graph. So if I were to graph, and I'm not going to show all the way up to 13, so we'll just go like 15, 14, 13. And over here I'll show 11 and 12. Um, if the inflection point, that means like the middle point, right, if that's right there, and then the next point is 12, 15. So we'll go right one and up two. Then you know that your other point has to be right one and down two. And I mean, I have breaks here because that's not zero, zero there. But it always is, um, it always has rotational symmetry about that inflection point. Um, so when we try to figure out what A is, um, all you have to do is think about, well, normally, if I go over 1 and cube it, I get 1. So if I go over 1 and then I get 2, I am stretching vertically by 2. So I can just go with the very next point after my inflection point and figure out um, my stretch. Sometimes it's a lot easier to just look at that. So we now know that A is 2. We know that H is 11 and K is 13. So we're going to say, and we know, look, we know it's going down and up, so it's not reflected. Um, we will say f of x equals positive 2, x minus 11, all cubed, and then plus 13. Um, for these, we will tell you if there's going to be a b value versus an a value. Um, so if, you, if they don't say anything, just go with a. Um, because, yes, this could have been a B value, um, but we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to, you'll just be told if it's A or B, okay? All right, so that is it for tonight's video. Enjoy your evening, and I will see you tomorrow.